Hi, I'm Wendy. Welcome to my West Coast garden. Okay, I'm going to talk to you today about rats. Fair warning. If you live in Alberta, you don't even need to watch this video because apparently there are no rats in Alberta. But for the rest of us, it's a sad and true part of gardening, especially on the West Coast. But I have some solutions. Just bear with me because I want to tell you a story. So I think that rats are super disgusting. And the thought of them being in my garden really grosses me out. And the thought of them eating my produce that I've lovingly nurtured for months is, it's even worse. So a couple of years ago, I bought my first greenhouse. And I was super excited because I thought I could finally grow tomatoes, which is kind of a hard thing to do here on the West Coast. So anyway, I got, um, I got, I, I was growing a beautiful, early girl variety um, it was ripening and and um, I went out every day to my greenhouse like many of you take tours around your garden and and admired it maybe several times a day just waiting for that day that I could pick it and have it on a toasted tomato sandwich and then one morning I went out and yep you guessed it there was a bite out of it and not a huge bite like not a devouring bite, just like a tiny little nibble. Enough to just pierce the skin so that instead of ripening, it was gonna rot. So for a few days, I tried to convince myself that maybe it was a squirrel or maybe a cat had gotten in there. Um, but after not very long and a few friendly uh, online comments, I began to accept that it was a rat that was eating my tomatoes which made me really mad and quite determined so I got some traps I baited them I put them around my yard and in my greenhouse and I started catching rats uh, rather a lot of rats I think I stopped counting at 22 but the more research I did, the more I realized that with the mild weather on the Pacific coast where I live, the fact that I live in a port city and the available food supply in my garden, I was creating a perfectly hospitable environment and that trapping them was only addressing the symptom, not the cause. So the next season, I focused on making the environment as inhospitable as I could. And you know what? Except for a nibble out of one zucchini, it worked. I didn't lose a single tomato, tomato and zucchinis are kind of a dime a dozen in the garden. So it made me really happy. But in researching what to do, I came across an excellent um, hour-long video podcast of a lecture from the Oregon State University Master Garden Series, and it's called something like Rats in the Garden. I've put a link below. So if you're interested in learning more about rats and habitat and how to keep them out of your garden, um, it's, it's an excellent resource. But if you're just looking for some quick tips, um, here are three takeaways from that video and other research that I did that helped me fix things in my yard. So number one, as I did with the traps, control the population. I used traps instead of poison for a bunch of reasons, but the method is not without its downside. You need to be really diligent about checking and cleaning the traps every day, and it is quite disgusting to discard dead rat bodies. Uh, I use surgical gloves and it is recommended uh, that you don't touch dead rats probably live rats either um, but anyway I didn't want to come in contact with them so I actually bought a box of a thousand uh, surgical gloves so that I could uh, dispose of them without coming in contact with them um, and I found two types of traps the traditional wooden ones and then the more modern plastic ones they both work perfectly fine but the plastic ones are easier to clean out because you just have to push this lever to release them, which you can do over, the, over a garbage bag, 
um, which you can then throw away. Whereas the wooden runs, you have to lift the springed arm that killed the rodent. And that means when you go to clean it, your hand is right by the dead rat's head. Uh, and then you have to kind of shake the carcass out. The operation is quite gross and really off-putting and often rather than having to risk touching the carcass, um, I just throw the whole thing in the garbage. So really, even though the plastic ones are more expensive, for me, it wasn't any more cost effective. Um, the other problem with the wooden ones is that they break down and they rust in the rain. But if you have a strong gag re reflex and live somewhere drier, either type will work. Um, there's also battery operated traps that the rat runs into and is then shocked and killed. And I did buy one, but $60 later, it didn't catch a single rat. And they would only work in the garage or somewhere undercover. You can't have them out in your yard. I baited them with peanut butter, which I think is common, but you can look online and there's, there's probably other things that you can use. Um, the traps are great in the greenhouse where the there's a doorway keeping the animals out but if you put them around your yard you need to um, make sure they're in a location where household pets or other animals like skunks won't become trapped and injured the for the outdoor ones i just put them behind a temporary chicken wire fence which of course doesn't slow down the rats uh, they can actually control contort their bodies through anything that they can get their heads through which I think is about the size of a quarter but anyway um, the chicken wire does keep the neighborhood cats and dogs safe so that's number one number two um, and this is what I talked about addressing the symptoms rather than the cause you need to reduce the habitat rats prefer protein but they will eat anything um, including the fruit you didn't get around to picking and the wood bugs in the wood pile and the chafer beetles in your lawn. Um, this bit of information kind of defeats me, but I have still done my best to clean up what I can, including eliminating underbrush, which gives them protection to move around the yard. And rats behave like prey and they don't want to be caught out in the open where they are more likely to be attacked or killed. So the third thing is to introduce predators. As much as I hate my dog barking, when she treed a rat for the first time and kept barking at it, I let her go on for five, 10 minutes. I'm also happy when the neighborhood cats patrol the overgrown garden of my next door neighbor. And when a bird of prey picked one off in the alley, I did a happy dance. So I can't do anything about the fact that there are rats roaming around my neighborhood. I live in East Vancouver, so do they. Um, and I read something recently that said during COVID, with restaurants and businesses closed down, that there are actually more rats following humans to our habitat outside of the urban business center so that they continue, can continue to feast on our yummy garbage. But I don't know if that's true. Last year in the height of the pandemic, my traps didn't get much action. I guess we'll see how many rats I catch this year. I would love to hear about your successes in battling rats. So let me know in the comments how you've prevailed and good luck with keeping them away from your garden this year. See you next time on my West Coast Garden.